If you have ever had a guest cause damage or leave a huge mess, this video is for you. I'm going to help you get paid. There was a recent video that came out on YouTube with a popular YouTuber that's got a few Airbnbs talking about when you should charge a guest for extras. And the actual answer, the correct answer, is always. Not a lot of you know that there are tools within the Airbnb platform and a couple secrets on how we do this that you can always charge a guest for damages and always get your resolution through without having to suffer a negative review in return. And some of you might say on principle we shouldn't be charging for the little things, but I'm gonna disagree with that. This is going to be a hot take kind of video because this is business. Business is competitive and I promise you another person in your identical situation, if they're better at getting money out of Airbnb, not the guest, but better at getting money out of Airbnb than you, they're gonna make more money than you. And since this is business, whoever makes the most money wins. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to get paid by Airbnb on behalf of the guests that do damage in your property. I'm gonna teach you a secret that I have never told anyone before until today on this channel, aside from my students, because they get first access to everything. And I'm going to give you some tips on persuasion as well to make sure that this goes well for all parties involved. Let's jump in. Yes, thank you so much for watching my videos. I know that I'm a little bit boring. I know I'm very much educational and dry. So thank you for watching my videos because I'm not doing dad jokes or fun stuff half the time, but I will work on it if it matters that much to you guys. So let me know in the comments if you want more personal stories, if you want more dad jokes. Until then, I'm just gonna give you mad value, really thick value on how to run your Airbnb business. Now, there's gonna be multiple parts of this conversation, so I want you to get out a pad and pen because this is gonna get a little heavy. We need to talk about the order of operations in which we go through resolutions. We need to talk about how we're phrasing these resolutions. We need to talk about who's actually paying the resolutions, and we need to talk about what Airbnb is doing now that they're a publicly traded company. All of these matter. There are different types of properties, and I will recognize that. There's gonna be small properties, low margin, there's gonna be big properties. And for any of you that want to argue with me and say, well, stained towels doesn't matter to my listing because we're some hyper luxury property and we're not going to give a guest a hard time over $60 worth of towels, you probably have an insurance policy outside of Airbnb like proper insurance and they will pay you for that stuff. So if you prefer to not talk to the guest directly because you're a luxury property and you just feel like leaving it alone, then invoke your insurance with proper and have them pay for these damages because they'll do stuff like that. Good for you. I want to let you all know that if you're on the Airbnb platform, Airbnb insures your reservations through air cover. And that's the one thing I think is not getting recognized here. And by the way, I'm not gonna actually sponsor an insurance company either through a channel manager or otherwise because you don't need to pay a single dollar for this to work. So anybody trying to sell you an insurance program or a channel manager like Guesty with guest coverage, no, it'd be honestly just a waste of your money. And again, we're talking how to be profitable here and wasting money on insurances and software is one more way to be less profitable than the person you're competing against. So we're gonna do this for free and we're going to invoke air cover. Here's the one that you guys can easily pull off because you can easily fathom it. It's the way that you guys plan on doing resolutions. What you have to do is you have to start a resolution as soon as possible to increase your likelihood that Airbnb is going to pay you. The part of it that's most important is documentation. After a guest checks out, you'll need to have photos of the damage. That's just the way that it is. Now, you can put that into a draft. You can start a resolution claim and not have to invoke it right away, which means this can buy you a couple hours, it can buy you a couple days. What I want you to do, if you want to get consent from the guest right away to try to start a resolution, I want you to reach out to them. Now, being mindful that they could get offended, you can phrase this in a way that's a little bit more on their side by nature than they would expect you to. So let's say the guest absolutely wrecked the house. You could say, hey, I hope you're okay. We have some photos of the house. We don't know exactly what happened, but we're starting a, a resolution with Airbnb so Airbnb can pay us for some damages and some extra cleaning. Um, if there's anything that we can do to assist you, uh, please let us know. And if you have any feedback for us on how the home was left in this condition or how we found the home in this condition, uh, um, we would appreciate any insight. So you start a resolution without blaming the guest. This is one of the weirder things I know, but trust me, in the customer service world, this will work. You're always giving the guest an out, just in case. So you're starting a resolution, even if it was this egregious party that got thrown and you just absolutely know it was the guest's fault, you'll still start the resolution and say, hi. I know that this could be a sensitive topic, we're not blaming you, but we have to start a resolution with Airbnb in order to get the insurance to pay for any damages associated with how we found the property. Here's some photos of how we found the property. We don't know how this happened. We would love your assistance if there's anything that you can help us with. And it could be from a big trashy party down to stained sheets and broken wine glasses. Now by offering your assistance and the benefit of the doubt, the guest isn't going to get nearly as combative. Now what happens with these really small claims is Airbnb just 
pays them. The guest can say, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, this $15 wine glass, it wasn't my fault. And because of the way that you phrased it with the Airbnb guest, you have the least likelihood of defending them, allowing them to save face, and then just have Airbnb's billion dollar insurance policy or whatever they've got covered, and you let them pay the $15. Airbnb has the money, AirCover has the money, and Airbnb, in order to make you happy as a host, because you're one of their customers too, they'll pay you $15 or $25 for these little damages. You don't have to make the guests feel like they're a criminal when you invoke um, a resolutions claim, and that's one of the biggest aspects here. And bird's eye view, if you actually look at the dynamics of this, that guest isn't your guest. That guest is Airbnb's guest. That OTA, the online travel agency, took your property and sold it to someone else. They got the guest to pay Airbnb and then Airbnb paid you. So they are the middleman. No matter how you slice it, Airbnb is liable to them and they're liable to you. So instead of you coming at a guest directly, you know, in an aggressive way, let Airbnb be the one that has to suffer for it. Now, before I get to my big secret, there's something inevitable here. And this is where a lot of people get really concerned because lately Airbnb is not paying everything out. Airbnb, ever since they became a publicly traded company, I have a hunch that they're automatically denying a percentage of claims because if they denied them all, they'd get caught for this. But if they deny a percentage of them and force you to go to arbitration, then Airbnb can say, oh, it's just part of the process. We can't catch every claim or pay every claim appropriately. But what Airbnb is probably tracking on the back end, probably, I know this sounds accusatory, but you know, let's put our tinfoil hats on. They're probably tracking out of all the people that they deny claims for, what percentage do they actually pay on the back end in arbitration? And Airbnb's probably found that none of you are going to arbitration. So that way, they're making all of this extra money by denying claims that you aren't going after them for because you're so afraid of taking Airbnb to arbitration because they might cancel your account or ban you and you should not be afraid of fighting for money that you're owed. I will, in the very near future, be doing an arbitration bootcamp. I'm going to teach you guys how to go through arbitration and I'm actually bringing a guest attorney who's a friend of mine who specializes in class action lawsuits and arbitration, specifically with Airbnb. I'm sure Airbnb's going to hate to hear that, but yes, I'm going to host an event and bring an attorney in and walk you through what the arbitration process actually looks like on paper so you don't do anything wrong when going through arbitration because it is an inevitable truth now that they are a publicly traded company that we know our rights as a host and we go after Airbnb for damage that they owe us for. And they're probably going to disagree when I say that the guest is their guest, but that's an interpretation in their contract. They claim that the guest is our guest once the contract is in, in play, but Airbnb can cancel reservations without our consent. They can charge us without our consent. So arguably, Airbnb still has control and authority over the guest experience, which means that it's their guest. Before I give you the secret, I'd like you to like the video, please. Help other hosts find this, share this one with your hosts, because this isn't one of those competitive things where if you share this with a host, you're gonna lose money. This is one of us, us hosts versus Airbnb kind of things, where all of us hosts deserve to get what we were paid. And if any of you were around during COVID's outbreak, you remember that Airbnb canceled a ton of reservations against their cancellation policies and did not pay us what we were owed. So it's about time all of us got our stuff together collectively as Airbnb hosts and start charging Airbnb what they're owed. So share this with your host friends. It's no skin off of your back. Thank you in advance and this will make everybody a lot of money. Here's how we never get a bad review for a resolution. I hired somebody named Melissa who does something called guest experience. She's the one who tries to get a guest a refund if a guest has a problem with her company. She's also in charge of resolutions and reviews. Reputation, resolutions, reviews. Nice and easy, right? At 150 properties, this makes total sense. Having 100 plus resolution claims open at any one point in time, this makes total sense because some resolutions take months, okay? That's why we can have 100 open at once. Now, with this said, what we do is we do not bring up damage until we get the review. So we'll start that draft like I told you. You get the photos, you upload it, but you don't hit publish. And Melissa is reaching out to the guest. Hey, thank you so much for staying. We'd love to have you again sometime. If there's anything else that we can do for you, let us know. And you know, I hope you found the work that we've done uh, to be worthy of your five-star review. Airbnb is really heavy-handed on hosts, some form of version like that. If we don't get a five-star review from a guest, it's actually a bad thing, according to Airbnb. So we would love that if you could help us with that review, something like that. Everything that I told you to do, just say it now after the review is done. 
you'll say, hey, we have to invoke a resolution claim with Airbnb because there's an insurance policy that can pay for some wine glasses that we found. We found some broken wine glasses on the floor, some broken plates. Uh, we found uh, that there's a gigantic fire set off in the backyard and it burned the whole lawn. You know, we don't know how this might have happened, but we need to send this to Airbnb so we can invoke the insurance policy, air cover, so we can get paid for these things. If you know how this happened or know how this could have come to be, um, we would love to hear your side of the story if there's any information that you can share with us. Also, if this is your first time talking to Airbnb through the resolutions process, if you have any questions that we can help you on guiding you through how resolutions and claims work, um, to please ask us any questions you'd like. We, we're here to help you. We just want to make sure that Airbnb pays us for this, you know, the damage that we found. You just do that same, we trust you, we love you thing, but after they've already left a review. If you do it like this, you'll get paid almost every time possible. Um, the guest will deny something if it's expensive enough and they don't feel like they should have to pay it. And then of course you're gonna go and invoke your air cover claim because Airbnb is still going to pay you. And here's another thing. When you collect a security deposit on Airbnb, you don't actually collect a security deposit. There's no money actually being held. That just gives Airbnb the right to charge a guest when they say they don't wanna pay. You know the only difference between charging a security deposit and not is that if you don't have a security deposit, Airbnb will pay you out of air cover. If you do have a security deposit and Airbnb can then later charge the guest credit card, they will pay you out of the guest's credit card. So charging a security deposit is good for Airbnb because it allows them to charge the guest instead of having to invoke their insurance policy. You're actually just doing them a favor by faux collecting a security deposit. You're pre-authorizing damages, but there's actually no security deposit held. So it doesn't help you get paid. It just helps Airbnb lose less money. And all of this to say, guys, in recap, this is not your guest. I strongly believe that an Airbnb guest is not your guest. And if you want to make an Airbnb guest your guest by collecting their information and retargeting them and doing direct bookings, stay tuned for uh, some direct bookings videos because the one thing we're trying to do as an operator in the short-term space is have Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com, any other online travel agency give a guest a first experience with us and that's why we pay them their percentage. But then after that, if we can get them to fall in love with our properties and come back and see us, we can recapture that information. But until you have the means to do direct bookings and the high probability that guests are gonna come back, you doing a guest a favor by not charging them $40 for towels or $50 for wine glasses is just losing you $50 because that guest doesn't care about you. They're not loyal to you, they're barely loyal to Airbnb. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always, I'll see you on the other side.